All right. We should now be all set for our final talk of the day. So we have uh, Ricardo Aito Brun talking to us about ViewFind as a solution to patent data aggregation. Okay, good afternoon. Let's start the presentation. It's okay. Well, basically, um, um, this presentation is related to the institutional repositories, and I suppose that most of the people okay. here know that. Basically, the, the point is that, of course, I cannot say that it happens in all the cases, but in, in most of the cases, the institutional repositories are collecting papers, articles, published in journals, but uh, there is an important type of documents, of documents that are produced by, by people in the universities that uh, are the patents and the invention, the documents that describe uh, different inventions. So they are part of the information assets of the universities, of the entities, but in general, it can be said that the patents typically are not present in, in the institutional repositories. Or maybe some people are inputting information, are making the deposit of patents or metadata about the patents, because of course the patents have, um, have legal implications, so it's, it's, a, it's a complex type of document. And, but well, in general, this is something that is missing, okay, in most of the cases. And this is the, the origin of, of this activity. Let me see if I can put here bigger the, the presentation. Um, mm -hmm. Not sure, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, I want to, I, I want to put it bigger because I, I <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> You can close this if you want. Okay, much better. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So working, uh, typically, in most of the people, most of the people working in the universities, academic staff, professors, etc., um, there is a um, big movement, open science, and also the people are being assessed according to the to the content that that they are publishing in, in these kind of repositories. Uh, so at the end, the patents, we think that it's an important type of document that can give greater visibility to the research outputs of the individuals and groups who work in the universities. Uh, there is also one gap between the theoretical content that sometimes is published in academic journals and the more practical, more technical application of the knowledge that is represented in, in, in the patents. And uh, typically, something that is also very important is that the patents uh, might be, um, the invention might be made by people in the university, but typically this is made in close collaboration with private companies and other institutions. So now you know that there are um, a big emphasis on the analysis of the, the productivity of the people, um, how much um, academic staff is producing, how to assess them, and, and how to assess the collaboration patterns. So probably uh, if we have access to this information about the patents, we will be able of getting a better picture of what, what are the, the collaboration patterns and what is the productivity of the academic staff. So this is more or less the context. And, and well, we have been involved or, and we have collaborated in the development of different uh, institutional repositories but with the space, okay? Um, uh, you know that the space is the, probably the most popular tool to build um, uh, institutional repositories. And the point is that when we started thinking on, on, this, uh, on this approach, on the possibility of integrating uh, data about patents into the information ecosystem managed by the universities, uh, we start working with the space, okay? And later, we realize the possibility of using a similar approach uh, with the Wufine uh, tool. And basically, um, the patents 
are publicly available through different databases, international databases, like the European Patent Office, WIPO, etc. And of course, the National um, Patent Office. So uh, there are, you can say, too many databases where we can find this information. It's very important in any case to be aware of the different restrictions that apply because uh, there is some information later in the presentation. Um, the patent offices, they are publishing different work products with more or less information. And depending on the product and depending on the information that they are giving about the patents, you can do some things and you cannot do other things. So when dealing with patents, it's very important, first of all, to, to make a, an analysis of the what kind of things can be reused, what kind of things can be incorporated into our databases, and what kind of so of, of documents can be indexed, okay? because as, as I told you, uh, it's quite complex and there are different restrictions depending on the amount of information that they are given. In any case, um, these databases are providing different um, methods to access the, um, the content about the patents, uh, some of them, they are providing APIs that you can call from, from your uh, application. I think that in the case of Bufine, it will be possible to make this kind of integrations. Technically, I don't know how to do that, but <laughs> after, after getting all the information uh, today, uh, this will be a possibility. And in addition, the, in the world of patents, uh, in the last years, uh, the patent offices, they made different initiatives related to the open data and linked open data uh, approach. So basically, they are providing information about the patents, not only through the APIs, but also through different dump files that you can download and you can process to do whatever uh, you want. And Basically, um, in this context, we can do different things. For example, we can collect the information about the patents and we can incorporate them into existing uh, information um, databases or repositories with uh, thinking on, a, on the local uh, um, scope. So for example, uh, we can collect the patents for, uh, to, um, for the institutional repository of a specific university or for the institutional repository of a set of universities, okay? With a regional scope or, uh, or a different uh, kind of grouping. And it would be possible, for example, to collect the patents and to create databases for focus on a specific subject or topic. So there are different uh, approach that we could use to reduce this information that is being offered to, to us. Um, this is not something new. There are uh, different uh, approaches that have been uh, used. The open data, the linked open data approach, and, and have dealt with patents. One of them, in fact, it, it was uh, developed by one group here in, in Leipzig University, uh, ATSW. Probably, I don't know, but might be people here in the room that has been involved in this, uh, in, in this project. They created a big uh, database, uh, a semantic database, uh, using patterns from the US, and they propose an initial schema to, to keep the metadata about the, about the patterns. So it's something that uh, it has always been there and, and is, of course, important. And, Thinking on the description of the patents, what kind of metadata um, are expected? So here, just to, to make a reference to the European Patent Convention, one of the rules, 143, indicates the information that has to be collected when you register a new European patent. patent. So here you have, for example, different metadata that we can say are the basic information that we uh, should take into account when we are thinking on building a repository of uh, patents. Um, we said that patents are complex 
And, and basically, uh, when we talk about the patents, we might find different, uh, different documents related okay, to each other. So this is just an example. There are more types of documents related to, patent, to patents. For example, the A1 is the European patent application published with including the cell report. The A2 is the same, but without the cell report. The A3 is when you have the search report as a separate document. The A4 is a supplementary cell report. So for the same patent, you can have like different documents that are related. And of course, uh, we have the difference between the application of the patent and the final patent once it is granted. That um, they have different codes, different IDs that need to be uh, related. Um, the formats that um, are being used to exchange the information about the patents, because at the end, if we want to get patents to include them in our repositories or in our discovery tools, we must be aware and we must know about the formats, the exchange data exchange formats that, that are in place. Uh, Basically, it's the same. It's a complex situation. Uh, WIPO, the International Patent Office, they have published different standards and recommendations. So, for example, they have different formats like ST9, ST14, ST16, 32, 36. And you can see that, for example, the first one, number nine, is covering the bibliographic data. Uh, 14 refers to the reference that are cited in, inside the, the patent document. Uh, 32 is markup of patent documents used in SGML, and 36 is the equivalent we can say for XML. What happens, for example, in the case of the European Patent Office? Uh, they have also different exchange formats. They have DocDB and they have EDB, EPO, bibliographic data. So you can see that there are when we are going to collect the information about the patents, it might happen that depending on the site where uh, you are getting the data, you are going to, or you need to deal with different schemas and different metadata to, to collect this information. Um, in this case, uh, we focus on the, on the patents published by the National uh, Patent Office in, in, in Spain. Uh, this OEPM is the, the name of this entity. They have a database that is called Inbenes. Uh, they are giving the possibility of getting the results in, in CSV format. Uh, and inside this database, we have around 12,000 patents granted to universities. Okay, and, and this is the, the data that uh, that we are working with. Uh, in addition, they have an open data program where they are publishing also the information about the patents in, in terms that you can get and you can reuse for your purpose. Here, the point is that the way they are publishing the information, um, basically for each patent, you are going to find separate different files. You're going to have a one file with the bibliographic data, one XML file with the bibliographic data. You are going to have files containing several abstracts for several patents. You are going to have, for example, the full text of the patents only since 1987 uh, in XML. And also um, they are giving access, for example, to TIF, uh, TIF files, with the with the images of the of, of the pages of, of the patents, um, so basically uh, this information is the information about the patents. The patents is split into different files, and these um, damn files are published are updated every week, and you can also get the yearly backlog files. In other terms, if you want to get information about patents, and more or less this schema is present in, in the different uh, patent offices. Either you can either um, work with the APIs or 
you can get the damp files with the data and you can process them uh, and of course and in a regular basis get the updates and process them again and again so basically this is um, what we mentioned that um, the information is split into different files and it's something interesting that um, some files follow one schema st36 but for example you see that the file with the abstracts they are using a different schema the st32 uh, that for example is is sdml is dtd so it's, it's something is not um, following the xml uh, directives we can say um so uh, when we want to collect the information for one patent the first thing that we need to do is to put together all the information about these documents uh, of course there, there is it's necessary to make some kind of uh, pre-processing of the for example in the case of the abstracts because they are put together in a single file so you need to split them you have to make some changes because uh, if you process the abstract with thinking that it is XML, this is going to fail. So it, it is necessary to make some adjustments in the in the case of the files containing the abstracts. And for example, this is the particular case of of the one national agency. Uh, if we go to the European Patent Office, um, they have different products, as we said before, EBD, the patent register, etc you can see that mm, there are some differences in the way they are publishing the data but the most important point is that there are different differences regarding how to the things that you can do with the data okay um, and depending on the things that you want to do you need to pay okay, some amount of money this is just for for information you have here in the presentation that is published in the in the in the website of the of the seminar um, you have the difference between the different products that are published by the European Patent Office. And here you have also the information about the cost that um, that you have to pay depending on the product. Okay. So this is just for, for reference. Um, and for example, for the licenses, um, um, some examples. No? For example, in the case of the License might be used to the EPO database for internal business purpose or to create its own product or own matching readable database. The license must not make the database or a copy of the data as such available to the public. So it's very important to take care of, of these uh, aspects. Um, also, as we said, depending on the, on the product, the amount of data that they are offering is going to be different. And even the way the data is organized, for example, in the in, in, in DocDB, they have the bibliographic data, they have the IPC, the classification codes from the international uh, patent classification, and they have the citations that, for example, in the European Patent Register, they have the bibliographic data, the IPC codes, and the information about the administrative life cycle and all the events related to the patent. When it was, uh, the application was created, when it was granted, if there are some kind of um, complaints about the patents, of course, this information, probably from the legal point of view, is more important. And, and this is one of the reasons because there are different constraints and different prices okay, for the for the different data sets for, provided by the European Patent Office. Uh, this is also some of the differences between the, the EDB product and the European Patent Office full text database so here you see that um, is, uh, there are different um, things covered and probably the full text is the most complex choice between all the alternatives uh, offered by the European Patent Office linked open data and um, as, as we said there is another initiative at the European level to provide the information about the patents as linked open data. Uh, so they have provided an SparkQL endpoint, 
some information is not visible, for example, information about the detailed description and the claims. Uh, but well, it's, it's just, we can say, another product that will be used as an input in the case of the European patents. So basically, what is the, the implementation approach? Um, we are not thinking on having a, like a repository of, with all the patents of the universities in Spain or something like that. We are thinking on the possibility of integrating the information about patents into existing repositories. Might be the repository of a specific university, might be the repository of a group of universities um, where they are publishing papers, articles, etc. And, and in order to do that, we can say that we are thinking on acting like a or, or providing a um, solution to um, to get the data and to integrate and to integrate this data into uh, your own repository or database. Uh, so basically, we start working with the space. Uh, we collected the information from the uh, Europe Spanish uh, Patent Office, sorry, uh, from the Oficina Española uh, Patentes y Marcas, and uh, with this information, we prepare, uh, we make a process that technically is is quite simple, but is is effective to collect all the data, merge the necessary data, and uh, prepare the package to be injected into the space using the SAF, the simple, I think it's simple access file or something like that uh, protocol. Something quite simple. You put in a folder the, the full text documents with some additional metadata, metadata, and this is injected into the space. Um, the other possibility on the other line is to uh, feed uh, a discovery tool like Bufine with this information about patents and to inject the patent metadata, of course, not the not the PDF, but, but for example, we can do that with the full text because as we said before, uh, the patent agencies are providing not only the metadata, but also the full text in XML format. So you can take this data and you can generate the entries to feed the solar index that, that is used by, by Bufine. So basically, this is the, the, the approach that we have followed. This is like the mapping of the different metadata. Uh, so in the source file, uh, you have um, on the ST36 element. These are the metadata that are used in the input files that we are collecting the dump files that we are collecting from the from the national patent office. In the third column, we have the equivalent in in the DSpace configuration, and in the last column, the uh, the mapping that we have made to the metadata in uh, Bufine. So this is just for for information. And finally, for example, here you have okay. How are we pointing to the to the uh, to the in the case of the full text, what happens with the full text, um, and this is this is important when we think about the difference between the space and Bufine, the, the PDF file or the TIFF images, they are already stored in the in the databases of the of the patent offices. So, do we really need to get these files and to to put these files also in the space? Maybe it makes no sense, no? If, if the document is already in a safe uh, place, uh, probably mm, just having the link and having the metadata and, and giving people the possibility of finding these resources and using these resources when you make, for example, to to make an assessment of the productivity of researchers or academic groups, etc., is enough. So here, for example, I think that the approach of using a discovery tool is better, okay? Because we are keeping the link to the, the URL metadata, we are keeping the link to the to the place where you can get the full text, and you don't need to duplicate files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, more or less, this is the this is what uh, I have just described. What is the approach? Basically, is a standard XML and a standard uh, style sheets. Uh, to to make the conversions of the data and the merge of the data with some uh, CSAR code, 
Um, and well, uh, uh, at the end, the, the good point is that you have the input files that you can inject in, in this case, in Bufine, and, and you can um, search at the same time, not only the, the information coming from, from, well, from uh, papers, articles, books, etc., but you can also include in, in the scope of your discovery tool uh, information about patents, okay? Um, and, and you can offer this information to your users. Um, just uh, as a conclusion, um, we can follow this different distributions model of this information. Uh, the aggregation of patent metadata into a single discovery site uh, combined with other information resources. It's also possible that it, it, it was the initial idea uh, to create like data packages for the patents that can be provided to the different universities or groups of universities so they can merge this information with their the space repositories or with their uh, discovery tools. Uh, the benefits of the approach is that we don't need to uh, collect the PDF files, whatever, and put them, make another copy. So with the discovery tools, we can just point to the place where the full text is uh, available. And at the end, uh, we are going to give um, visibility to one important information resource that typically is, is, is missing in most of the repositories. And, and well, in, in general, I think that the, the, um, it's, it's something that is easy, but can provide uh, relevant benefits okay, to improve the, the, the visibility and, and to keep together all the information that uh, universities are, are generating. And something that the, the next step that we have in mind is to um, do the same approach not only with the data from the National Patent Office, but uh, using as an input the, the data for the, from the European Patent Office. That technically it could be um, easier, okay, because the, uh, in, in, the, in all the products that they have, in, in some of them, they are putting all the information together for the patents. And, and these problems that dealing with different files, some of them in SGML, others in XML, doing the merge, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it is something that it could be, uh, at the end, I think, easier. Probably, I don't know if there are other people working with, with patents here. If, uh, if you want to, to join us, and it, uh, you are welcome. And I don't know, it's a question that I would like to do if, if from the point of view of the development of the mm, connectors uh, with APIs. I don't know if, if uh, someone have made um, this kind of link between Bufine and the uh, databases, for example, from the European Patent Office or, or equivalent. So instead of waiting for your questions, I made you answer the answer of the questions. And basically, this is the, this is, this is the presentation. So thank you very much.